I'm Larry Walther. This is PrinciplesofAccounting.com, Chapter 18. And in this module, we are continuing our consideration of break-even analysis and target income analysis. We can use the principles we've just learned for break-even analysis to also calculate a target net income. Although breaking even is not a bad thing, it's certainly not a satisfactory outcome for most businesses who desire to achieve an income or profit level. And so target income calculations are just like break-even, except that we're going to treat our target income like a fixed cost. In other words, our margin needs to cover our fixed cost plus our target income. So, algebraically then, we can see that sales to achieve a target income would be equal to our total variable costs, our total fixed costs, and our target income level. There are several, again, shortcut formulas that can be applied for these calculations. The units to achieve a target income level would be our total fixed cost plus our target income divided by the contribution margin per unit. And the sales to achieve a target income level would be our total fixed cost plus our target income divided again by the contribution margin ratio. For Leland, to reach a target income of $600,000 would require 1,500 units to be sold. We would calculate that as our fixed cost of $1,200,000 plus the 600000 target income, or in other words, $1,800,000, divided by our contribution margin of $1,200 per unit should return us the value of 1,500 units. In thinking about CVP analysis, there's also another term I would like to introduce, and that is the concept of margin of safety, or the degree to which sales exceed the break-even point. Remember, Leland had a break-even sales level of $2 million. Any sales over $2 million are considered to be the margin of safety for Leland. Let's also use CVP analysis to think about the ability to judge a business's scalability. In other words, how is it affected, how is its profitability affected with increases or decreases in sales volume. Here I've got two companies, Leaping Lemming on the left and Leaping Leopard on the right. Now both companies have sales of 5,000 units at $1,000 per unit or total sales of 5 million and both broke even. In other words, net income was zero for each company at that sales level. If you'll look closer though at Leaping Lemming, you'll notice that its variable costs are 90% of sales and they have a very low fixed cost of $500,000 while Leopard has variable cost at $400 per unit or 40% of sales but they have a very high fixed cost of $3 million. So both companies broke even at this level of sales but what if we look at the revised example where sales are now 10,000 units instead of 1,000 units. Sales are now $10 million for each and look at the distinct differences in profitability. On the left we see a $500,000 profit but on the right we see a $3 million profit. So what the previous analysis reveals is that Leopard has a more scalable business. Leopard's contribution margin is high and once sales exceed their fixed cost hurdle, it will turn very profitable. For Lemming, sales increases are met with significant increases in variable costs. Uh, however, be aware that scalability can be a double-edged sword. If we had a decrease in volume, the effect would be far more devastating to Leopard than it would be to Lemming because Leopard continues to be burdened with the fixed cost that it will incur no matter its volume of sales. 